Ahoy and welcome. This is Admiral. Today we're going to look at the top 10 Wrath civilizations. This was actually something I covered almost four months ago as my second narrated video, after I vanquished victors and vanquished in my review of that DLC. But given the rough quality of vocals on that video, and a later key technology and stat change applicable to Bengali Wraths, I think it's time to revisit the topic. Furthermore, this previously obscure information has subsequently appeared on the Age of Empires wiki, and most recently, Spirit of the Law has spilled the beans about the Wrath secret to a far larger audience than my original video could ever reach, so I won't be treating it like the secret that it was when I first made it. As a brief refresher, converted units typically retain the stats they had when you converted them, and don't benefit from technologies or bonuses of anyone but the Bengalis who can train them. But the Wrath's mechanic of switching weapons, or more comprehensively, switching units, has the same effect as if that unit were created fresh in that instant, updating it with whatever bonuses and technologies apply to your civilization at that moment, and removing any that don't. The same is true of a couple other units that employ a transformation mechanic, such as villagers when they change jobs. And you may have noticed that enhanced Spanish, Inca, or Bohemian villagers that you convert will quickly lose their gains and go soft, once you stack a midlife career change on top of the faith crisis they've just experienced. Trebuchets are another unit that employs a transformation mechanic when they pack or unpack, but neither of those are very exciting given that every civilization can train villagers and trebuchets. Unlike with Wraths, you're not getting anything from converting the villagers or trebuchets of another civilization that you couldn't have gotten more conveniently by just training those units yourself. Obviously, you would have to convert quite a few Wraths for your civilization's bonus to have much of an impact on a game, and most of us would struggle to pull off such a Viper-esque masterpiece. But just for fun, we're going to look at civilizations with unique bonuses or technologies that can affect their converted Wraths so I've made a list of my top 10 Wrath civilizations, obviously apart from Bengalis. Now keep in mind that for every civilization except Bengalis, transforming a converted Wrath will result in the loss of the 20% attack speed for both modes provided by the Pikes technology, as well as the Civ bonus of plus 2 damage against Skirmishers for the melee mode. Considering that Bengalis lack Thumb Ring, however, any civilization that gets it can make up for most of the lost fire rate in ranged mode as well as receiving an accuracy upgrade to 100%, where the Bengali Wrath is capped at 90%. Bengalis also lost Parthian tactics in the Victors and Vanquished patch, and the Wrath gained some armor, so any civilization that can access that technology stands to benefit from tankier chariots. And for some civilizations with no applicable bonuses, and that miss a lot of relevant technologies, like Aztecs, you may want to avoid mode switching where possible, as it will result in a significantly downgraded unit. But let's see if we can find a few civilizations that at least provide some situational net improvements for either the melee, ranged, or both modes. Starting off with 10th place, we encounter the Malians, featuring extra melee attack, thanks to the Farimba technology, although with a less impressive showing on the ranged mode due to missing Bracer, although with the same armor as the Bengali Wrath due to both of them missing Parthian tactics. In 9th place come the Sicilians, whose Wraths take 33% less bonus damage, allowing them to take more hits from Camel and Spearline units than Bengali Wraths, on top of being harder to convert after First Crusade. However, they are significantly worse against ranged units, including Elite Skirmishers, due to their lack of both Parthian tactics and Ring Archer armor. 8th place, strangely enough, goes to Dravidians, who despite lacking important technologies for the speed and longevity of their cavalry, nevertheless get high marks for range and damage output, and in melee mode can slash through the armor of anything that gets close thanks to Wuth's steel. In 7th place we find the Saracens, the only fully generic Wraths on this list, who benefit from no bonuses, but who have every relevant non-unique technology that could possibly benefit both the ranged and melee modes, and are the first on this list to receive Parthian tactics, providing them with an impressive 7 melee and 9 pierce armor, allowing them to take just 1 damage from a generic Arblester, instead of the 3 that a Bengali Wrath takes. It is but a scratch! Sixth place goes to the Bulgarian Wrath, with full upgrades except for ring armor, and with a melee attack rate almost to rival that of the Samurai, thanks to the Stirrups technology, which also allows them to avail themselves of their trample damage more frequently, on top of benefiting from cheaper and faster blacksmith upgrades. And in 5th place we have the Japanese Wrath, who not so long ago were in the same position as the Saracens, but thanks to an extra boost for their cavalry archers, now deal plus 2 bonus damage against enemy archers, 
making them very well adapted to fend off any attempted Mongol invasions of their adoptive homeland. Speaking of Mongols, their rats take fourth place, despite missing ring armor, for the fastest ranged attack, able to keep up with Dravidian elephant archers shot for shot, and even firing faster than the masterful Mongolian Mangudai. If you weren't already terrified of the Mongol hordes, the charge of the Khan's converted Chuko chariots will clearly change your mind. Before we move to the top three, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Shout out to Admiral Wololo AoE to check him out. Now we come down to the final three, where the competition is fierce as all of them have full upgrades on top of other very significant bonuses. In third place are the Tanky Turks, with both forms of their robust rats benefiting from the Sipahi technology for an impressive 155 hit points, allowing them to defeat an elite camel archer that would easily destroy a Bengali wrath. In second place, we have the terrifying Tatars, with strong silk armor, 20-20 vision, free thumb ring, and Parthian tactics, and a greater ability to end fights once they've attained the high ground. Sabre Anakin, I have the high ground! Arguably making them the best when all of these bonuses apply. They end up with a mind-blowing 8 melee and 10 pierce armor, earning them the coveted honorific suffix of Skarl, and an impressive second place medal of silver or electrum, on top of taking only one damage from generic heavy cavalry archers. And in first place, the gold medal goes to the Magyars, whose recurve bow wielding wraths simply outrange the competition, who can deal high damage from behind the frontline support of powerful cavalry, and who get their melee mode attack upgrades for free. Now, is this knowledge going to win you any games or make you want to pick Magyard in a match against Bengalis? Perhaps not, although you may occasionally get some benefit from it, or use it to flex on an enemy from a winning position as one might do with Sholok warriors. Perhaps if you enjoy games against the AI, you might use this information to farm rats from a Bengali bot in order to have them benefit from the bonus of your choice to form an eccentric army of these extraordinary elites and make your enemies face the wrath of Khan. As someone who likes to explore the game's mechanics and envision one civilization's unit benefiting from another civilization's bonuses, I was pleased to find at least this one instance, aside from team units, where this can actually happen in a normal game. And if you want another fascinating example of a similar type of behavior on another unit, check out this video. Anyway, I hope you liked this top 10, and if you have different ideas about who you think the top Wrath civilizations are, we can talk about it in the comments. This has been me ranking the results of a recently re-revealed reaction to the Wrath's reassignment of religion. Till next time.